top 10 Lovecraftian comic books explored, and they lived happily ever after. Just kidding. They are all dead or insane. Clearly a joke that only the fervent fans of H.P. Lovecraft will get. This celebrated cosmic horror writer here is a whole different mood altogether, and there is no denying that. The year 2022 marks the 85th death anniversary of Howard Phillips Lovecraft, the person who started as a pulp writer and ended up redefining an entire realm of horror literature, and let's not forget his creation of the Cthulhu mythos. While it has been a rather difficult task to incorporate the particular style of Lovecraft into media such as films, surprisingly it has been quite favorable on the part of comic creators. In today's video, we are going to entwine our love for Lovecraft as well as cosmic books and take a look at 10 of these Lovecraftian comic books. Mind you, this list is in no particular order and you are more than free to add your favorite ones in the comments section in case we have missed them here. You ready? Let's do this. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Nameless. Often regarded as the scariest comic book of 2015, this Image Comics limited series here is a result of the trio of Grant Morrison, Chris Burnham, and Nathan Fairbairn. Coming together, the six-issue science fiction horror series melding elements of Mayan and Aztec mythology follows a nameless occult hustler enlisted by a bunch of billionaire futurists to save Earth from a massive asteroid called Zibaba that is on a collision course with the planet. Also, with Zibaba approaching nearer, it exhibits some kind of psychic control not only over the people of Earth, but also over the astronauts who explore it. In fact, the story makes it pretty hard for both the characters in the comic book as well as the ones reading it to differentiate between reality and nightmare. And to top things, the characters finally find themselves confronting what looks like some sort of a race of Lovecraftian god monsters. Now. There are no second thoughts about the story being ultra-violent. There are faces getting torn apart, astronauts getting their limbs torn, several characters killing and eating their very own families. You know that you just cannot take Nameless lightly. Backed by Burnham's electrifying work of art, Morrison takes his readers to the extreme dark corners of the universe. Mind you, this spinning narrative here is undoubtedly not for every comic book reader, but certainly an experience to remember for certified geeks. So, if you fancy Lovecraft in comic books, you are in for a real treat. Fall of Cthulhu. Ever wondered what happens when gods go to war and mankind has to survive? Well, if you truly wish to know the answer, Michael Allen Nelson's contribution to the collective Cthulhu canon, Fall of Cthulhu, to be more precise, is what you should be on the lookout for. Published by Boom Studios and heavily inspired by Lovecraft's short story, The Call of Cthulhu, the central characters of this 2007 comic book series find themselves caught up in the middle of an ancient, elaborate plot one that's intended by the malign deity Niarlathotep, with the sole purpose of raging a war between the great old ones, collecting into six volumes the Fugue, the Gathering, the Grey Man, God War, Apocalypse, and Nemesis along with an omnibus, Nelson takes his readers on a journey to the very boundaries of consciousness and way beyond. With the first volume, Nelson effortlessly builds up quite an atmosphere of grim horror. There's a lot of that's taking place. Things like that will eventually make way more sense as you move on to the next volumes. Please take note that the kind of comics this is, it is most certainly not for the casual readers. While it isn't gory, it is conclusively disturbing and dark. With the second volume unfolding a lot of events, the third volume introduces exciting characters, mainly Lucifer and Sheriff Dirk. The fourth volume, and it goes without saying, has all hell breaking loose, especially with the war between the gods. The fifth volume does bring the series to a dramatic finale, one that brags quite a few twists and revelations. As for the final volume, we will leave things to you. We highly recommend that you explore this comic book series and let us know your thoughts about it. Neonomicon, written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Jason Burroughs, this four-issue comic book limited series serves as a sequel to Moore's preceding two-issue comic book miniseries, Alan Moore's The Courtyard. Published by Avatar Press back in the year 2010, Neonomicon continues to further explore Lovecraft's Cthulhu mythos. Now, when it comes to Moore, he is particularly known for associating his work as well as themes relating to it with Lovecraft. With Neonomicon, he introduces the readers to the character of Johnny Carcosa, in other words, an avatar of Neolithotep, one of the great old ones. It goes without saying that Moore wanted to elaborate on some of the ideas that already existed in the first installment and at that same time tell his readers a contemporary story. 
one that definitely did not depend on a 1930s atmosphere. The goal was to highlight certain things that he thought Lovecraft had intentionally left out of his stories. For those of you who are yet to dive into this particular comic book series, please be aware of a few characteristic traits of Moore that we'd like to highlight. For starters, he is brilliant but when it comes to his work, but it is sexually explicit. Therefore, it should not come as a shock to you at all when we tell you that Neonomicon has on display a graphic rape sequence boasting some very well executed elements. What we have is a large fishman forcibly penetrating a woman. Yes, it was absolutely horrendous, and earlier when we said well-executed elements, we meant the visual imageries more from the point of view of the woman to amplify the suspense of the creature getting revealed. Hats off to Burroughs for being so incredible with his work throughout. A winner of the newly created graphic novel category at the Bram Stoker Awards in 2012, Neonomicon is a true treasure, one that you just would not want to miss out on. Alan Moore's The Courtyard The two-issue comic book miniseries adapted by Anthony Johnston from a 1994 short prose horror story by Alan Moore is backed by a brilliant work of art by Jason Burroughs. Published by Avatar Press in the year 2003, Alan Moore's The Courtyard has FBI agent Aldo Sachs specializing in anomaly theory to probe deeper into three apparently unassociated ritual murders across the United States. As part of investigation, he goes to a nightclub in Red Hook and learns about a psychoactive drug called Aklo. Sachs arranges a meeting with the mysterious peddler called Johnny Carcosa at the dealer's apartment and is given a hallucinogenic white powder, one that acts more like a prelude to the alco. Sachs, under the influence, is subjected to bizarre visions of spectral planes and unsightly primeval creatures, and soon comprehends the fact that Aklo, in reality, is the language that Carcosa spoke to him. Things take a horrible turn for Sachs when the preceding visions lead him to slaughter his fellow neighbor in the same manner as the killers that he was looking into. What truly makes this adaptation such a hit amongst fans is the stellar artwork by Jason Burroughs. It is flowy, it is easy to comprehend, and the Lovecraftian monsters on display are more than just fine. Burroughs needs a special commendation for giving the characters impressive facial expressions, something that really worked in favor of the story here. In case you have not checked this out yet, trust us when we tell you that you should. Providence. Continuing to explore Lovecraft's Cthulhu mythos, this 12-issue comic book limited series written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Jason Burroughs serves both us a prequel as well as a sequel to Moore's previous stories, Neonomicon and The Courtyard. With the yellow sign, the hook, a lurking fear, white ape, in the walls, out of time, the picture, the key, outsiders, the haunted palace, the unnameable, and the book, categorized as the 12 issues, Providence is set in the year 1919. The series revolves around gay Jewish writer Robert Black, primarily working as a reporter for the New York Herald. Black takes a time off from his career with the sole aim of writing a great American novel, making use of the occult outsiders that he is pursuing across New England. When we say there was no stopping the series from getting critical acclaim, one does get a fair idea about it, right? After all, Moore has irrefutably been one of the top most creators to wholly grasp the rich mythology in the Lovecraftian tradition and also expand the mythos. In case you did not know, the first volume ended up being a recipient of a nomination for the 2016 Bram Stoker Award for Best Graphic Novel. The Dunwich Horror If you fancy H.P. Lovecraft as much as we at Marvelous Videos do, know this that you just cannot miss out on Joe R. Lansdale's The Dunwich Horror. Backed by Peter Bergting artwork, it is what one would like to address as the dawn of a great horror story. Well, if we take a closer peek at the first few pages of this comic book here, you will observe that it has no dialogue. As surprising as it might seem to you, the right mood is already set. There is suspense, there is mystery, and soon the readers will find themselves flipping through the pages, holding on to their breaths just to know what it is that is waiting for them on the next page. Signs of a good story, right? Well, did we not make this clear right at the very beginning? Hats off to both Lansdale and Burning for successfully being able to come up with such an intense ambiance and also keep the readers hooked until the very last pages. To achieve this, it requires a very particular set of skills, and you know not everyone gets to do that, but the duo surely did. We don't want to spoil the story for you. It is highly recommended that you give this a shot as soon as you can. Also, did we miss out on the part that this comic adaptation of Lovecraft here is specifically for the 21st century audience? Oh, well, now you know. The Calling, Cthulhu Chronicles. So, a cruise ship comes to the port and hundreds aboard the ship are dead. Well, when you have a premise like this, you know you are in for a real treat. There are no second thoughts about this heavily Lovecraft-inspired horror graphic novel, one that is written by Michael Allen Nelson. P. 
piquing the interests of fans of supernatural horror series and of course the great old ones. Right from the scary, concise storytelling, the profound weight established right at the beginning, the riveting art design, the classic Cthulhu mythos, and the way everything was interconnected, there is literally nothing not to like about the calling Cthulhu Chronicles. One only wishes that a story as grand as this one here truly had more volumes to brag. A single volume clearly leaves the readers craving far more, especially when you have a certain ghost ship angle attached to it. Anyway, addressing to all fans of cosmic horror, there is an old one sleeping that will hear. The Calling. And just like that, you know you cannot miss this. Batman, the doom that came to Gotham. Here, let's make this easy for you. If you are someone who happens to be a fan of Batman, Lovecraft, and Mike Minola, you are simply going to love this, Batman, the doom that came to Gotham, published under DC Comics' Elseworlds imprint, has an alternate Batman in the 1920s finding himself battling against supernatural forces that have taken over the city of Gotham post- inadvertently reawakening a terrible thing from beyond space and time, one that is known as the Lurker on the Threshold. Having said that, be honest if this has ever crossed your mind. What if the character of Batman was written by Lovecraft? How would he end up being? Well, this is precisely what this miniseries here aims to do. It fulfills the deepest desires of not only the fans of Cosmic Horror, but also fans of Batman. The artwork on display does full justice to the unsettling mood, and for that we have the duo of Dennis Yonke and Dave Stewart to thank for. Also, the addition of Raz Al Ghul, Green Arrow, and Two-Face makes this three-issue comic book miniseries all the more gripping. Colder, written by Paul Tobin and illustrated by Juan Ferreria, Colder specifically comes under the category of comic books where the artwork is so overpowering that you'd want to read it anyway. We are pretty serious about this one. Colder has no direct reference to H.P. Lovecraft or even the Cthulhu mythos for that matter. But yes, it does draw very heavily on the Lovecraftian usage of insanity, hence making it to our list of the top 10 Lovecraftian comic books to be explored. Wondering what's the story about? Well, Colder is about Declan Thomas, one who becomes cursed by Nimble Jack to become colder, or in other words, his body temperature happens to be far below than the average. For those who aren't aware, Declan is an ex-inmate of a mental institution, one that was apparently wrecked in a fire. Anyway, he has this mysterious capability of stepping inside a person's madness and also cure it. Of course, he strives to cure his own, but then he is running out of time. A demonic predator is seen chasing him through what appears to be a nightmare version of Boston, and if Declan's body temperature reaches zero, you know it is over for him. Fatale. Published by Image Comics, this supernatural noir comic book here is the creation of Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Initially declared to be a 12-issue limited series, Fatale was eventually extended to 24 issues post which the series concluded. As far as the narrative is concerned, it concerns Josephine, more properly known as Joe, a female Fatale, apparently immortal, having survived from the 1930s till the present times and not a day older. Joe is blessed with a supernatural power to hypnotize men and make them intensely infatuated with her. For decades, Joe has literally been struggling to both comprehend and keep her powers in check. At the same time, she is also being hunted by some kind of violent cult, ones that worship cosmic gods reminiscent of Lovecraftian horrors. Somehow, all this is tied to Joe. With this, we come to an end to today's video. Please feel free to add your favorite Lovecraftian comic books, the ones that you think should have made it to the list in the comments section. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.